In mathematics, infinitesimals are things so small that there is no way to measure them. The insight with exploiting infinitesimals was that entities could still retain certain specific properties, such as angle or slope, even though these entities were quantitatively small. The word infinitesimal comes from a 17th-century modern Latin coinage infinitesimus, which originally referred to the infinite th item in a sequence. Infinitesimals are a basic ingredient in the procedures of infinitesimal calculus as developed by Leibniz, including the law of continuity and the transcendental law of homogeneity. In common speech, an infinitesimal object is an object that is smaller than any feasible measurement, but not zero in size, or, so small that it cannot be distinguished from zero by any available means. Hence, when used as an adjective, infinitesimal means extremely small. To give it a meaning, it usually must be compared to another infinitesimal object in the same context as in a derivative. Infinitely many infinitesimals are summed to produce an integral. The concept of infinitesimals was originally introduced around 1670 by either Nicolaus Mercator or Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. Archimedes used what eventually came to be known as the method of indivisibles in his work The Method of Mechanical Theorems to find areas of regions and volumes of solids. In his formal published treatises, Archimedes solved the same problem using the method of exhaustion. The 15th century saw the work of Nicholas of Cusa, further developed in the 17th century by Johannes Kepler, in particular calculation of area of a circle by representing the latter as an infinite-sided polygon. Simon Stevens' work on decimal representation of all numbers in the 16th century prepared the ground for the real continuum. Bonaventura Cavallari's method of indivisibles led to an extension of the results of the classical authors. The method of indivisibles related to geometrical figures is being composed of entities of codimension 1. John Wallace's infinitesimals differed from indivisibles in that he would decompose geometrical figures into infinitely thin building blocks of the same dimension as the figure, preparing the ground for general methods of the integral calculus. He exploited an infinitesimal denoted 1, infinity in area calculations. The use of infinitesimals by Leibniz relied upon heuristic principles, such as the law of continuity. What succeeds for the finite numbers succeeds also for the infinite numbers and vice versa, and the transcendental law of homogeneity that specifies procedures for replacing expressions involving inassignable quantities, by expressions involving only assignable ones. The 18th century saw routine use of infinitesimals by mathematicians such as Leonard Euler and Joseph Louis Lagrange. Augustin Louis Cauchy exploited infinitesimals both in defining continuity in his cores deanalyze, and in defining an early form of a Dirac delta function. As Cantor and Dedekind were developing more abstract versions of Stevens' continuum, Paul du Bois Raymond wrote a series of papers on infinitesimal enriched continua based on growth rates of functions. Du Bois Raymond's work inspired both Emile Borel and Thoralf Skolem. Borel explicitly linked Du Bois Raymond's work to Cauchy's work on rates of growth of infinitesimals. Skolem developed the first non standard models of arithmetic in 1934. A mathematical implementation of both the law of continuity and infinitesimals was achieved by Abraham Robinson in 1961, who developed non standard analysis based on earlier work by Edwin Hewitt in 1948 and Jersey Loss in 1955. The hyperreals implement an infinitesimal enriched continuum and the transfer principle implements Leibniz's law of continuity. The standard part function implements Fermat's adequality. Vladimir Arnold wrote in 1990. Nowadays, when teaching analysis, it is not very popular to talk about infinitesimal quantities. Consequently present-day students are not fully in command of this language. Nevertheless, it is still necessary to have command of it. Topic. History of the infinitesimal The notion of infinitely small quantities was discussed by the Eleatic school. The Greek mathematician Archimedes C. BC C. BC, in the method of mechanical theorems, was the first to propose a logically rigorous definition of infinitesimals. 
His Archimedean property defines a number x as infinite if it satisfies the conditions x greater than 1, x greater than 1 plus 1, x greater than 1 plus 1 plus 1. An infinitesimal if x does not equal 0 and a similar set of conditions holds for x and the reciprocals of the positive integers. A number system is said to be Archimedean if it contains no infinite or infinitesimal members. The English mathematician John Wallace introduced the expression 1, infinity in his 1655 book treatise on the conic sections. The symbol, which denotes the reciprocal, or inverse, of infinity, is the symbolic representation of the mathematical concept of an infinitesimal. In his treatise on the conic sections Wallace also discusses the concept of a relationship between the symbolic representation of infinitesimal one, infinity that he introduced and the concept of infinity for which he introduced the symbol infinity. The concept suggests a thought experiment of adding an infinite number of parallelograms of infinitesimal width to form a finite area. This concept was the predecessor to the modern method of integration used in integral calculus. The conceptual origins of the concept of the infinitesimal one, infinity can be traced as far back as the Greek philosopher Zeno of Elia, whose Zeno's dichotomy paradox was the first mathematical concept to consider the relationship between a finite interval and an interval approaching that of an infinitesimal sized interval. Infinitesimals were the subject of political and religious controversies in 17th century Europe, including a ban on infinitesimals issued by clerics in Rome in 1632. Prior to the invention of calculus, mathematicians were able to calculate tangent lines using Pierre de Fermat's method of adequality and Rene Descartes' method of normals. There is debate among scholars as to whether the method was infinitesimal or algebraic in nature. When Newton and Leibniz invented the calculus, they made use of infinitesimals, Newton's fluxions and Leibniz's differential. The use of infinitesimals was attacked as incorrect by Bishop Berkeley in his work The Analyst. Mathematicians, scientists, and engineers continued to use infinitesimals to produce correct results. In the second half of the 19th century, the calculus was reformulated by Augustin Louis Cauchy, Bernard Balzano, Carl Weierstrass, Cantor, Dedekind, and others using the epsilon delta definition of limit and set theory. While the followers of Cantor, Dedekind, and Weierstrass sought to rid analysis of infinitesimals, and their philosophical allies like Bertrand Russell and Rudolf Carnap declared that infinitesimals are pseudoconcepts, Hermann Cohen and his Marburg school of Neo-Kantianism sought to develop a working logic of infinitesimals. The mathematical study of systems containing infinitesimals continued through the work of Levi Savita, Giuseppe Veronese, Paul Dubois Raymond, and others, throughout the late 19th and the 20th centuries, as documented by Philip Ehrlich. 2006. In the 20th century, it was found that infinitesimals could serve as a basis for calculus and analysis, see hyperreal number. Topic. First order properties In extending the real numbers to include infinite and infinitesimal quantities, one typically wishes to be as conservative as possible by not changing any of their elementary properties. This guarantees that as many familiar results as possible are still available. Typically elementary means that there is no quantification over sets, but only over elements. This limitation allows statements of the form for any number x. Quote, for example, the axiom that states for any number x, x plus zero. Topic x would still apply. The same is true for quantification over several numbers, e.g. for any numbers x and y, x y. Y x. However, statements of the form for any set S of numbers may not carry over. Logic with this limitation on quantification is referred to as first order logic. The resulting extended number system cannot agree with the reals on all properties that can be expressed by quantification over sets, because the goal is to construct a non Archimedean system, and the Archimedean principle can be expressed by quantification over sets. 
One can conservatively extend any theory including reals, including set theory, to include infinitesimals, just by adding a countably infinite list of axioms that assert that a number is smaller than one-half, one-third, one-quarter and so on. Similarly, the completeness property cannot be expected to carry over, because the reals are the unique complete ordered field up to isomorphism. We can distinguish three levels at which a non-Archimedean number system could have first-order properties compatible with those of the reals. An ordered field obeys all the usual axioms of the real number system that can be stated in first-order logic. For example, the commutativity axiom x plus y equals y plus x holds. A real closed field has all the first-order properties of the real number system, regardless of whether they are usually taken as axiomatic, for statements involving the basic ordered field relations plus, times, and. This is a stronger condition than obeying the ordered field axioms. More specifically, one includes additional first-order properties, such as the existence of a root for every odd-degree polynomial. For example, every number must have a cube root. The system could have all the first-order properties of the real number system for statements involving any relations regardless of whether those relations can be expressed using plus, times, and. For example, there would have to be a sign function that is well-defined for infinite inputs, the same is true for every real function. Systems in category 1, at the weak end of the spectrum, are relatively easy to construct, but do not allow a full treatment of classical analysis using infinitesimals in the spirit of Newton and Leibniz. For example, the transcendental functions are defined in terms of infinite limiting processes, and therefore there is typically no way to define them in first-order logic. Increasing the analytic strength of the system by passing to categories 2 and 3, we find that the flavor of the treatment tends to become less constructive, and it becomes more difficult to say anything concrete about the hierarchical structure of infinities and infinitesimals. Topic. Number systems that include infinitesimals Topic. Formal series Topic. Laurent series An example from category 1 above is the field of Laurent series with a finite number of negative power terms. For example, the Laurent series consisting only of the constant term 1 is identified with the real number 1, and the series with only the linear term x is thought of as the simplest infinitesimal, from which the other infinitesimals are constructed. Dictionary ordering is used, which is equivalent to considering higher powers of x as negligible compared to lower powers. David O. Tall refers to this system as the superreals, not to be confused with the superreal number system of Dales and Wooden. Since a Taylor series evaluated with a Laurent series as its argument is still a Laurent series, the system can be used to do calculus on transcendental functions if they are analytic. These infinitesimals have different first-order properties than the reals because, for example, the basic infinitesimal x does not have a square root. Topic. The levi civita field The levi civita field is similar to the Laurent series, but is algebraically closed. For example, the basic infinitesimal x has a square root. This field is rich enough to allow a significant amount of analysis to be done, but its elements can still be represented on a computer in the same sense that real numbers can be represented in floating point. Topic. Transseries The field of transseries is larger than the levi civita field. An example of a transseries is East Lane Lane X plus Lane Lane X plus J equals zero infinity E X X minus J 
Display style e caret sqrt lane lane x plus lane lane x plus sum underscore j equals zero caret nft e caret x x caret j, where for purposes of ordering x is considered infinite. Topic: Surreal numbers. Conway's surreal numbers fall into category two. They are a system designed to be as rich as possible in different sizes of numbers, but not necessarily for convenience in doing analysis. Certain transcendental functions can be carried over to the surreals, including logarithms and exponentials, but most, e.g., the sine function, cannot. The existence of any particular surreal number, even one that has a direct counterpart in the reals, is not known a priori, and must be proved. Topic. Hyper reals The most widespread technique for handling infinitesimals is the hyper reals, developed by Abraham Robinson in the 1960s. They fall into category 3 above, having been designed that way so all of classical analysis can be carried over from the reals. This property of being able to carry over all relations in a natural way is known as the transfer principle, proved by Jersey Loss in 1955. For example, the transcendental function sin has a natural counterpart asterisk sin that takes a hyperreal input and gives a hyperreal output, and similarly the set of natural numbers n has a natural counterpart n Display style caret asterisk math b n, which contains both finite and infinite integers. A proposition such as n element of n sin n pi equals zero. Display style for all n in math b n sin n pi equals zero carries over to the hyperreals as n element of n sin n pi equals 0 display style for all n in caret asterisk math b n caret asterisk sin n pi equals 0 topic super reals The superreal number system of Dales and Wooden is a generalization of the hyperreals. It is different from the superreal system defined by David Tall. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Dual numbers. In linear algebra, the dual numbers extend the reals by adjoining one infinitesimal, the new element epsilon with the property epsilon 2. Topic. Zero, that is, epsilon is nilpotent. Every dual number has the form z. a plus b epsilon with a and b being uniquely determined real numbers. One application of dual numbers is automatic differentiation. This application can be generalized to polynomials in n variables, using the exterior algebra of an n-dimensional vector space. Topic. Smooth infinitesimal analysis Synthetic differential geometry or smooth infinitesimal analysis have roots in category theory. This approach departs from the classical logic used in conventional mathematics by denying the general applicability of the law of excluded middle, i.e. not a does not equal b does not have to mean a equals b. A nil square or nilpotent infinitesimal can then be defined. This is a number x where x2 equals 0 is true, but x equals 0 need not be true at the same time. Since the background logic is intuitionistic logic, it is not immediately clear how to classify this system with regard to classes 1, 2, and 3. Intuitionistic analogs of these classes would have to be developed first. Equals Topic. Infinitesimal delta functions 
equals Cauchy used an infinitesimal alpha display style alpha to write down a unit impulse infinitely tall and narrow Dirac type delta function delta alpha display style delta underscore alpha satisfying f x delta alpha x equals f 0 display style in f x delta underscore alpha x equals f 0 in a number of articles in 1827 see Laugwitz 1989 Cauchy defined an infinitesimal in 1821 in terms of a sequence tending to zero. Namely, such a null sequence becomes an infinitesimal in Cauchy's and Lazare Carnot's terminology. Modern set theoretic approaches allow one to define infinitesimals via the ultrapower construction, where a null sequence becomes an infinitesimal in the sense of an equivalence class modulo a relation defined in terms of a suitable ultrafilter. The article by Yamashita 2007 contains a bibliography on modern Dirac delta functions in the context of an infinitesimal enriched continuum provided by the hyperreals. Topic logical properties The method of constructing infinitesimals of the kind used in non-standard analysis depends on the model and which collection of axioms are used. We consider here systems where infinitesimals can be shown to exist. In 1936 Maltsev proved the compactness theorem. This theorem is fundamental for the existence of infinitesimals as it proves that it is possible to formalize them. A consequence of this theorem is that if there is a number system in which it is true that for any positive integer n there is a positive number x such that zero for any and there exists is crucial. The first statement is true in the real numbers as given in ZFC set theory. For any positive integer n it is possible to find a real number between 1, n and 0, but this real number depends on n. Here, one chooses n first, then one finds the corresponding x. In the second expression, the statement says that there is an x at least 1, chosen first, which is between 0 and 1, n for any n. In this case x is infinitesimal. This is not true in the real numbers R given by ZFC. Nonetheless, the theorem proves that there is a model a number system in which this is true. The question is, what is this model? What are its properties? Is there only one such model? There are in fact many ways to construct such a one-dimensional linearly ordered set of numbers, but fundamentally, there are two different approaches. One, extend the number system so that it contains more numbers than the real numbers. Point two, extend the axioms or extend the language so that the distinction between the infinitesimals and non-infinitesimals can be made in the real numbers themselves. In 1960, Abraham Robinson provided an answer following the first approach. The extended set is called the hyperreals and contains numbers less in absolute value than any positive real number. The method may be considered relatively complex but it does prove that infinitesimals exist in the universe of ZFC set theory. The real numbers are called standard numbers and the new non-real hyperreals are called non-standard. In 1977 Edward Nelson provided an answer following the second approach. The extended axioms are east, which stands either for internal set theory or for the initials of the three extra axioms, idealization, standardization, transfer. In this system we consider that the language is extended in such a way that we can express facts about infinitesimals. The real numbers are either standard or non-standard. An infinitesimal is a non-standard real number that is less, in absolute value, than any positive standard real number. In 2006 Carol H. R. B. A. C. E. K. developed an extension of Nelson's approach in which the real numbers are stratified in infinitely many levels, i.e., in the coarsest level there are no infinitesimals nor unlimited numbers. Infinitesimals are in a finer level and there are also infinitesimals with respect to this new level and so on. Topic. Infinitesimals in teaching. Calculus textbooks based on infinitesimals include the classic calculus made easy by Sylvanus P. Thompson, bearing the motto, What one fool can do another can. 
and the German text mathematic fur Mittler Technische Faschulen der Maschinenindustrie by R. Neuendorf. Pioneering works based on Abraham Robinson's infinitesimals include texts by Stroyan dating from 1972 and Howard Jerome Keisler Elementary Calculus, an infinitesimal approach. Students easily relate to the intuitive notion of an infinitesimal difference 1. 0 0.999 where 0 0.999 differs from its standard meaning as the real number 1, and is reinterpreted as an infinite terminating extended decimal that is strictly less than 1. Another elementary calculus text that uses the theory of infinitesimals as developed by Robinson is Infinitesimal Calculus by Henel and Kleinberg, originally published in 1979. The authors introduce the language of first-order logic, and demonstrate the construction of a first-order model of the hyperreal numbers. The text provides an introduction to the basics of integral and differential calculus in one dimension, including sequences and series of functions. In an appendix, they also treat the extension of their model to the hyperhyperreals, and demonstrate some applications for the extended model. Topic. Functions tending to zero In a related but somewhat different sense, which evolved from the original definition of infinitesimal as an infinitely small quantity, the term has also been used to refer to a function tending to zero. More precisely, Loomis and Sternberg's advanced calculus defines the function class of infinitesimals, i display style mathfrak i as a subset of functions f v w display style f v to w between normed vector spaces by i v w equals f v w f zero equals zero e greater than zero delta greater than zero she delta f she e display style mathfrak i v w equals f v to w F zero equals zero for all epsilon greater than zero exists delta greater than zero back epsilon she as well as two related classes o o display style math frac o math frac o c big o notation by o v w equals f v w f zero equals zero r greater than zero c greater than zero she r f she c she display style math frac o v w equals f v to w f zero equals zero exists r greater than zero c greater than zero back epsilon she and o v w equals f v w F zero equals zero lim she zero F she she equals zero display style math frac o v w equals f v to w f zero equals zero lim underscore she to zero f she she equals zero. The set inclusions o V W O V W I V W Display style Math frac O V W subset neck Math frac O V W subset neck Math frac I V W generally hold that the inclusions are proper as demonstrated by the real valued functions of a real variable F x x 1 2 display style f x mapsto x caret 1 half g x x display style g x mapsto x and h x x 2 display style h x mapsto x caret 2 f G H element of I R R G H element of O R R H element of O R R 
Display style F G H in Math Frac I Math B R Math B R G H in Math Frac O Math B R Math B R H in Math Frac O Math B R Math B R But F G O R R Display style F G Noten Math Frac O Math B R Math B R and F O R R Display style F Noten Math Frac O Math B R Math B R As an application of these definitions, a mapping F V W Display style F V to W between normed vector spaces is defined to be differentiable at alpha element of v display style alpha in v if there is a t element of h o m v w display style t in mathrm home v w i E A bounded linear map V W Display style V to W such that F alpha plus she minus F alpha minus T she element of O V W Display style F alpha plus she F alpha T she in math frac O V W in a neighborhood of alpha Display style alpha If such a map exists, it is unique. This map is called the differential and is denoted by D F alpha Display style D F underscore alpha Coinciding with the traditional notation for the classical, though logically flawed, notion of a differential as an infinitely small piece of F, this definition represents a generalization of the usual definition of differentiability for vector-valued functions of open subsets of Euclidean spaces. Topic: <laughs> Array of random variables. Let Omega F P display style Omega math call F math B P be a probability space and let n element of n display style n in math B n an array x n k Omega R one k K N Display style x underscore N K Omega two Math B R mid one L E Q K L E Q K underscore N of random variables is called infinitesimal if for every E greater than zero Display style epsilon greater than zero We have Max one K K N P Omega Element of Omega X N K Omega E zero as N infinity Display style max underscore one L E Q K L E Q K underscore N Math B P Omega in Omega mid vert x underscore N K Omega vert G E Q Epsilon to zero text as N to N A T The notion of infinitesimal array is essential in some central limit theorems and it is easily seen by monotonicity of the expectation operator that any array satisfying Lindbergh's condition is infinitesimal, thus playing an important role in Lindbergh's central limit theorem a generalization of the central limit theorem. Topic. See also equals equals notes